Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm at a new special location, undisclosed location, because we have a really good reason for that. This is the all new, first time ever, 2021 Toyota Supra 2.0. So what does that mean? Underneath that hood is a two liter inline four turbocharged engine. Has never happened before until now. And guess what? Toyota chose Rady's Rides as one of the first auto journalists to bring this car to you. But before we dive into it, Let's talk a little bit about what's going on with the Toyota Supra. So we are now in what's known as Mark V, the fifth generation of the Supra. Obviously, Mark IV was a huge generation, not only from a performance standpoint, but also that connection to the Fast and Furious movie franchise. Now, what Toyota wanted to do with the Supra 2.0 is they wanted to bring some value for your hard-earned money. and. This having that two liter, but also having tons of performance is gonna bring it to you and you're gonna get that same great shape because one thing you're gonna notice, there's only a few different ways to tell the Super 3.0 compared to this Super 2.0. So let's go ahead, dive into this all new model for 2021 and see what Toyota has done. Now remember, we've already done a three, the three liter, the straight six on Rady's Rides, I'll have the link at the end of this video because that one brings even more power compared to the 2020. Right off the bat, like I was saying, same exact lines. You're gonna get the same wonderful lines, especially in this Renaissance red. Bright red, really pops, fits the curves well. Love the headlight design. You're gonna get the same on the 2.0, same LED headlights. LED daytime running lamps, and LED turn signals. And I'm telling you, the, the shape has really grown on me, especially the headlight design. It, it, if you cover this part, it almost looks like the Mark IV a little bit in the overall shape. Now, one downside is you're gonna get the same fake vents. So I am gonna zonk the fake vents. This would have been nice air curtain, or maybe just use a little bit different material. Definitely still looks aggressive though. You're gonna have, speaking of aggressive, that nice splitter that extends out, curves over. So not only is this gonna give us downforce, not only is it gonna help scoop air into the functional vents, but it's also gonna help channel air down the side of the car. As we come across the front, my favorite part of the Mark V Supra up front has gotta be the center section. You could really see the direct connection between this and what was on the FT1 concept. Very, very nice, strong design lines in here. Gives it a lot of character. And the way that the hood kind of slopes down on a nice slant, it's really gonna cheat air well. The coefficient drag on this car is so minimal. Another thing I love about the center section is this portion here, nice and flat. This is gonna help give even more downforce and get air not only into the radiator, but also the intercooler. But definitely stands out you see these going down the road and they really catch your attention. Going up onto the hood, focusing on that FT1 concept design, I think it was aesthetically smart to just carry it right in the hood and then it kind of cascades over to both sides. Now, as we come around the side, here are some big ways to tell the difference between the Super 2.0 and the 3.0. First of all, wheel setup. This is an 18 inch wheel. On the Super 3.0, you're gonna get a 19 inch wheel. This wheel is cast aluminum instead of forged, so it's a little bit heavier, but here's the great news. Same exact width. 18 inch diameter is different, but nine inches wide up front, 10 inches wide out back. The even better news is that they're wrapped in those sticky Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, which are gonna give you the stick and grip, but it's also gonna give you nice wear characteristics. These are 255. Just like on the 3.0, 255. This one though has a 40 series sidewall. Another big difference, even though I do love the style of the wheel, machined aluminum with that dark gray, it really, really works well. It doesn't look like an entry level wheel and tire setup. The brakes though is another story. So on the 3.0, those are gonna be those bright red Brembos. On this particular one, it's your standard caliper setup and the rotors are a little smaller. So you're looking at a 13 inch rotor in diameter instead of 13.7 inches up front on the 3.0. And then on top of that, at all four corners, you do not get the adaptive dampers. So you have standard suspension, standard shock absorbers, all four corners, but wait until we take this for a drive, you're not gonna see a difference. Now, as we go in that hood, I wish that this would have been made into a heat extractor to help drag that hot air but it, it does look really, really good. We go down that fender, kind of 
flows down, you're still gonna get that same awesome side sill extension. Remember, all of this is for aerodynamic efficiency. It's, it does look good, but it's also for aerodynamic efficiency. On the 2.0, you're getting gloss, mac, uh, gloss black mirror caps, LED turn signals. I love the way they gloss black out the uh, A-pillars, and then that same double bubble roof design. Come to this rear fake vent. The good news is, though, is that even though this is fake, the way that the air is channeled down the side, it hits perfect here, and that's going to throw the air up over the very, very large rear fenders. Speaking of rear, rear tire setup. So 10 inches out back, just like on the 3.0, means you have a 275 width on the rear, help going to give you traction down because don't be fooled. Just because this has a smaller engine doesn't mean it's not performing like you think. As we wrap it around back, I just want to rub my hands all over the rear end of this car. The way that it just flows, it almost looks like it was carved from a single piece of clay, like a big, huge block of clay. The way the duckbill spoiler kicks up, you get to the back and guess what? There's only one way, one way to tell that this is a Super 2.0. First off, you're going to get the same LED taillights. I love the housing, love the way it extends. The Super name, such an iconic name. Now here's the big difference. Instead of having the brushed aluminum larger exhaust openings, the tailpipes on each side, you have stainless steel and they're a little bit smaller. Still look the business, look the part, and I like the way they're kind of slash cut a little bit. You get the wonderful LED reverse light. And this diffuser, I'm telling you, it's right off of a race car and you could eat your lunch off of the end of this. Tom and I did it twice already. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see that new power plant for the Supra. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You can see how the top of the fenders, all one piece with the hood. You do have hydraulic hood struts. Here is the big way to tell that this is a 2.0. First of all, engine cover. Very, very similar to what is on the 3.0, but they made it a little bit larger. Another thing is that it's missing the bracing. So on the Super 3.0, they added some structural rigidity by putting a brace at the top of where the radiator is mounted here and the top of where your shock absorbers are. One on each side, they're bright aluminum, you can't miss it, that is another way. But, still great news coming from the front end of the business on this particular Super. You're looking at that two liter inline four turbocharged engine. It's a twin scroll two, uh, turbocharger, which is gonna produce 255 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. It's all routed through that same ZF eight speed as the Super 3.0. I was really hoping for a manual. Fingers crossed that eventually they're gonna do that, but I would like a manual transmission. Weight, if you're thinking that this one is lighter, you're 100% correct. 3,181 pounds, zero to 60 in five seconds flat. Top speed is exactly the same as the 3.0 because it's all electronically limited. Top speed is 155 miles an hour. And like I was saying, when it comes to performance, it wasn't like they just wanted a watered down version just to get you out the door. This thing, zero to 65 seconds, quite respectable, and the same top speed of 155 miles an hour. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the best part. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire up this Supra and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2021 Supra 2.0. Now, I still can't mention pricing yet. That will be next month in June, but I'm telling you, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Let's see, though, what you're gonna be getting once you hear that price point. Door panels, same great door panel as the 3.0. Now, instead of a 10-speaker JBL sound system, you're only getting four speakers. You do get the soft material though, that metallic gloss black hides fingerprints very well around the window switch gear. Nice soft armrest with some contrast stitching. Little tiny pocket though. Two tacos maybe from Taco Bell you'd be able to slide in there, but this Super is not about eating, it's about driving. Dash, same wonderful material, the way they brought the silver trim, very tastefully done. Good news is everybody gets an 8.8 .8 inch screen no matter which way you come in to your Supra that is new for 2021 for everybody. Last year, for 2020, if you bought a base 3.0, it only came with a 6.5 inch. 
What's wonderful is you got navigation, you got your Apple CarPlay, touchscreen obviously, we could rock out to 80s on eight. Real easy to use, very fast reacting. Let me show you a backup camera. We throw it into reverse. There we are out back, you got your trajectory, and of course you're gonna get all that uh, sensory protection so that you don't scratch your beautiful Renaissance Red Super when you're backing up or parking or whatnot. You have an aluminum start stop button, slim and trim on the radio controls, drop down, you're gonna have dual climate, which is very nice. Let me adjust that, because it's a little warm right now. You don't have heated seats, so that's one thing that you're losing with the 2.0. There's more of that metallic gloss black. Beautiful carbon fiber, so you're getting the same carbon fiber. They spilled it here for you. Down below, you have a little cubby down here for some M&Ms. The difference is you don't have wireless charging. So no wireless charging, but you have a 12 volt, a USB. I've been putting my garage door opener down there. Here's that ZF, what's gonna be controlling that ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. You got that BMW uh, iDrive controller. If you don't wanna touch the screen, I could bring back my menu. I could go back into map. Thank you. Um, you then have some buttons over here. What's nice about the Supras, you're either in sport mode or you're not. You put it in sport mode, and then you're ready to rock and roll. You have an active exhaust, just like on the 3.0. Electric e-brake, two cup holders, and then here's the biggest way. If, if I blindfolded you and then took the blindfold off once you got inside, another way that you would know that this is a 2.0 are the seats. And you know what? They're really great, though. You have leather with the stitch work. I love the silver contrast stitching, the red contrast stitching. The big difference is in the center. You have Alcantara, and I love the way they put some red behind the perforated material. The other big difference is that it is not power assisted, so they're manual for both the passenger and the driver. But you know what? As a way to cut costs, this is very, very smart, and still the seat looks sexy, and it feels just as good as the 3.0. But why don't you come over to the business end? I'll show you behind the wheel of the all new Supra 2.0. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. Love the nice silver trim plate, Toyota Supra. On the 2.0, you're just getting rubber down there. What I mean by that is you're just getting a rubber brake pedal, rubber throttle, and then the same dead pedal as the Supra 3.0. You do get on the driver's side electric bolstering where you could actually change the amount of bolstering and also lower lumbar, which is nice. Same steering wheel, feels good. The contrast stitching is great. The only thing that's not sexy to me, because there's tons of sexiness in here, is this horn button. I wish they would have done something with this and this plastic plate, but you do have the nice size paddles behind the wheel to go up and down that eight speed automatic transmission. And then from a dash standpoint, same exact thing. And that's a good, that's a good thing. You have your digital bar graph for fuel, for coolant, and then when you, I have it in sport right now, you can see how the tack is lit up. I take it out of sport and it changes. It's simple. The one thing you don't have is the head up display, but I promise you, you're not gonna miss it because all it tells you is your speed and what the speed limit is, nothing else. Great news though, is there's plenty of headroom. And one thing that I forgot to mention when we were going around the outside, this Supra sits a little bit higher than the Supra 3.0. So just something to also, but it's, it's, I'm telling you, you'd have to be, you'd have to have your ruler out and your tape measure and a level and maybe a T-square to, to see that. So good luck doing that while the car's driving. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out the cargo area and see how usable these Supras are. All right, guys, time to show off how usable this is as a daily driver. Before I do though, you're gonna get the same exact key fob, whether you go 2.0 or 3.0. It's got a nice weight to it. It's a little on the plasticky side, but you know what? It's got all the buttons that you need or can want. You pop the hatch, you lift up, and here is a really great selling point. If you need to try to convince your significant other, hey, I really need a Supra, here's a great way to do it. You're gonna have plenty of room. There's over 10 cubic feet of space, so promise you'll go get the groceries for the rest of your life. Promise you'll pick up your kit from school, which you should anyways. Up top, Tom is showing off that uh, structural brace, it's the same exact brace from the 3.0 that attaches, that puts together the tops of the shock mounts, and that's gonna help stiffen up the back end of the business. Still great amount of room though, but let's get to the best part. If you're ready, I'm ready. Time to get some on throttle driving impressions in this new 2021 Supra. All right guys, we're in the 2021 Supra. That two liter turbocharged engine. I have it in manual shift mode. Here we go, on throttle. So you're still
still getting those same quick shifts, just like in the Super 3.0. Let's see how she does through the, the twisty bits here. There we go. Yeah. I tell you, handling wise, you can feel the less weight that you're carrying, and that's a good thing, especially through these twider, tighter bits here. On the brakes. Wish I had Brembo's right about now, but still really good. This, you gotta carry your speed a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Nice and balanced through here. Very nice, look at this. This is great. Here we go. Gets the traction down really, really well. So, is it as invigorating as the 3.0? Obviously, you're, you're missing out on the horsepower, but still very, very capable. It got the traction down very nicely. And, and where you really see the big, big dividends from having a lighter Supra compared to the 3.0, is gonna be on those left-right or right-left quick transitions. You can really feel less weight at the front end of the business. But let's see how this tight 90 degree left-hand 90 degree turn feels. So on throttle, on the brakes, downshift, coming out of the turn. So very, very composed. You know, I think for somebody, especially getting into a uh, sports car for the first time, this is gonna allow you to feel confident and use the power that you have. Uh, I think with certain people in the wrong hands, the Super 3.0 could be a handful and you could get yourself into trouble, even though that really handles obviously very, very well. Inside the cabin, everything is exactly what you like in the Supra um, since its introduction, the Mark V in 2020. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this person here real quick. But, um, you know, you're still getting that same great dash. I'm not missing the head-up display whatsoever. But very, very composed. I mean, look at that. Very smooth. And you're getting a nice sound out the back. I'm getting some pops. I'm getting some bangs. That just makes the driving a little bit more engaging. But let's see how we do again. On throttle. So it's obviously slower revving, but still getting up to speed. On the brakes. Downshift. Downshift. Here we go. Here comes the fun part. On the brakes. Nice. What I'm missing is a little bit of pivot as I'm exiting the corner. There was just a little bit of pivot. I think that would actually help me a little bit with squaring off the turn. But even through this tight section here, you just stay, I just was flat through that whole thing. So that's the type of grip because the wheels are just a little bit smaller. They're 18 inch. You're still getting those great contact points at all four corners. And that's what makes this car, you know, handle as well as it does. Plus the quick steering. Really nice. All right, guys, let's go through the twisty bits one last time in this Supra 2.0. Manageable power, that's the name of the game. The great news is you're still getting a good amount of power. Is this a Toyota 86 or a Subaru BRZ? No, you're, you're getting more. You're definitely getting more for your hard earned dollars and the performance that you want from a Supra. But look at this. Here we go, here we go. Nice. All right guys, on throttle, here we go from a dead stop. I actually could go flat, through, almost flat through with these twisties right here based off the speed that we were going. Still a ton of fun. I mean, the car is a blast. It just, you know, if you could swing the extra money, I would say go for the 3.0. But for what you're bringing to the table with this, this car handles and drives excellent. Here comes uh, an 86 right there. And uh, it's not like that car, I promise you. Having the inline four, having the ZF8 speed, you get so many of the nice creature comforts on the interior um, that really separate this from the 86 or an FRS or a BRZ for sure. All right guys, back on throttle here, third gear. On the brakes, downshift. 
getting good bite from the front end. Those front tires are really sending the information perfect to the steering wheel here. Look at this, this is one right here, here we go. This is really where the Super 2.0 earns its money. Really great communication. The way that the car communicates, it doesn't feel watered down. You, you feel like if you never got into the Super 3.0, you would be really, really pleased and happy overall with what's happening in this car. It's interesting how people are attracted to it. That Renaissance Red just brings you in, um, just like that truck. But, you know, it, it, it's like you're not really wanting more in this particular package. All right, guys, here we go. One last time on throttle. I tell you that that kick it gives you from first to second is quite impressive. Little lift there on the brakes. Nice. Here we go. The feedback is is wonderful. It really it doesn't feel watered down. It doesn't feel like a watered down Supra, which is exactly what Toyota wanted. They wanted to be able to share the Supra with as many people as possible, and this just opens up the door to bring more buyers into the Supra brand. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what Supra 2.0 is about. We're gonna wrap this up, get back to our undisclosed location, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a fantastic, a super kind of day with this Supra. Definitely got to thank Corey and Zach with Toyota USA. Choosing Rady's Rides is one of the first to gain access to this car. I know I can't tell you the price yet, but I promise you the performance is there. You rode along with me. You got to hear the commentary this time. It's unbelievable by losing the weight, because remember, we're talking about well over 200 pounds less on this Supra, but they still brought the performance. That's what really just blows my mind. But if it's cars like these that you wanna keep seeing on Radius Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Radius Rise merch. Gotta give it up to Super Guns McGee, Tom Motioner working that camera like a super champ. Thank you, Tom, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.